Hi, this is Jana Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and this week's video is on a plugin called Flood 2 by Flaming Pear. So let's get to it. Before I show you the actual plugin in a working mode with one of my images, I figured I'd share with you their website. If you go to flamingpair.com, you can go to the free trials over here and you would find Flood 2 right here. The products over here and purchases, you can purchase the Flood 2 here. And below this video, I'll give you a coupon code, uh, SJP Flood, and you get 30% off of this, which is awesome, but it's only good until the end of November. 2016 so get to it ASAP it's so worth the money for sure once you purchase there is a download let's get rid of this that you will have a download with a PDF explaining how to use all these fun tools in flood 2 and also how to add in the plugin through Photoshop because you have to have Photoshop to use this plugin. Photoshop is the host and this is the fun tool to play with if you want to be creative with your images. So it does say that it's really mainly was designed for landscapes. I say take it to the next level and be creative with other images like macro images. So you'll see I'll show you several of my images that I've worked with, and then we will take it into the tool. All right, let's get to that now. I wanted to share with you a couple of the images that I have processed with Flood 2. This is my galleries.sullivanjphotography.com, uh, and I did a fun 2017 calendar using this plug-in. So I figured I'd share with you my flowers area. So I'll click on that. And here are a couple of the images. I'll go through what I'm talking about. It. Some of these images made the cut for the calendar and some of them didn't. So if you're interested in the calendar, actually go to SullivanJPhotography.com and you'll see under our products the calendar. It's a it's on sale right now, but as soon as we're done uh, selling them and they run out, they'll be sold out. So definitely check that out ASAP if you haven't had a chance. It's a great price right now, $19.99. So let's go ahead and go into the program and I'll show you the different little tabs. Okay, I have my glasses on and we are ready to rock and roll. So what I suggest that you do is make sure that your image is pretty much done. You've gotten rid of the spots, you've done your creative spin to it, and now you're going to add that final touch of creativity. So the image that you're seeing in front of you is a photograph that I did of a flower and then I took it into topaz and I did some wazoo impressions and some glow and some creative spin to this beautiful flower that I had from my garden. Now I want to go ahead and add the flood. Over here to the right, you can see, let me uh, make sure that you see what I'm talking about. Over here, I have the image. I always suggest that you make sure that you run a copy. So you can drag right here down to this bottom area, or you can do the command control J, and that will make a copy for you. One thing there is when it comes to the flood, is you cannot have you cannot make this layer down here at the bottom right where I'm putting my little cursor you cannot give it a sometimes I'll go to filter and then I will do a um, convert to smart filters you can't do that with unfortunately with this plugin or you cannot make the layer itself a smart object so unfortunately those cannot be done with this plugin, but it's only 33 bucks. Give me a break. You know what I mean? So let's just have fun with it. Make a separate layer and then I'll show you some ways that you can save what you've done to it. You go into the filter area here 
And then you can see I've already used Flood, so that's really cool when it comes to uh, um, Photoshop. You can actually, whatever you've done prior, you, if you like what you've done to another image, you could just throw it onto Flood and it will actually do the same thing. But we're going to go down to Flaming Pair, and we're going to go right over here to Flood 2, right there. Okay? It's going to open up the program, and we're going to start our fun. I have it, when it first loads up, it has a small, like a small little pane here. You can see Photoshop is in the background. So I always enlarge this screen so I can actually see. And I like bottom right over here. Just as personal preferences, I like to look at at least 50%, but you can use these arrows and go to 100 to, to 0. So you can use these to move that if you would like to see this. Now, if I don't know if you can notice, but I see my image in front of me and the color is not the same that I just saw from my screen. So I noticed that when I process my images that I'm really not focused on the color change. I'm really focused on the actual flood. Um, I'm going to work with over here to the left. I'm going to look work with view and water and ripple. And we will talk about all these really quick just so you have an understanding of what it does. But if you have any questions and you're like, I don't remember, they have left an awesome question mark down here at the bottom. You click on this and this tells you all of the tools and what you can do over here to the left. So if you're confused about what this does here to the left, just click on the question mark and read it. And it will tell you what you can do with the different styles over here to the left because I say when you work on this stuff you're working with negative space a lot so think of your positive space which is this and the actual water but you're also going to pay attention to the negative space of the flood so everything flows nicely you look at your lines you want things to go into your subject in a beautiful way or an aggressive way, whatever you want to do. So what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the view panel over here to the left. So let's get to that. Let's get into the view real quick. It's pretty self-explanatory. Right here is your horizon and your offset. Those really work together as a team. Your horizon, as you move them, you will see this green line is your horizon and it will move the water down or up. And basically, uh, it's super easy to use. And if you need to get to the detail and you need to push, like, say, 5 here, 6.5, you just click on it. Don't push Enter because you'll end up going back over to Photoshop. So just plug in your numbers and let the program work, okay? A little quick tip because I've learned many a times on oops push enter and it goes right into Photoshop so that is how you move your horizon offset means that say pretend this is a mountain and say you want the water to come over here on the sandy beach the offset moves the water to the foreground you know say like I said if you want a sandy beach or something like that or you don't want the water to go exactly on your horizon so that's what you do with that with this image we don't need to worry about offset I'm going to go ahead and read perspective and altitude as I'm doing this because I'm not a technical person, so I might screw up what I'm saying, <laughs> truthfully. So I'll go ahead and play with this slowly and I'll read it. It says, perspective sets the steepness of the perspective of the water's wavy surface. It's for matching the perspective of a wide or narrow angle lens. So as I move this, you can see to me, I see the creativity of what it's done to the water. If you guys are technical, then there you go. It's talking about the lenses. So as you play with perspective, you will see what it does to the water. Um, let's go ahead and talk about altitude. So altitude moves the camera up and down. Used together with perspective, you can produce a view of the waves that is compatible with your original image. 
That's what they say. I use it as paying attention to the water and what it does to the water, which I'm really liking the way it swirls here. That's pretty cool. This might be a little distracting to my main component, but I'm just letting you know that that's what the technical side is, but I like to actually just move these two and it really changes up the way the water feels. So play with those and get something really creative to go with your subject. Spin is pretty self-explanatory too. This is fairly new. I don't think this was in the other flood. Basically it's just moving the horizon. So if you need to spin it, say if something's, you know, in your subject that you need that has a fill and you don't want the horizon completely uh, straight, then you can use the spin to change things up that way. If you want, I don't want the spin to change, I'm just going to leave it at zero, let it work. I won't touch enter. And then now we will get into the water section. Now we're going to talk about the fun stuff. This is the water section right over here. It is where you're really going to be able to have and create some awesome water effects. Just like it says here, simple is simple and complex is complex. And complex is basically saying that you want waves that are pretty much uh, have a lot of weather to it and really wavy and crazy and all that fun stuff like that. So that is, you can change it to more of a simple feel or a complex feel. The waviness is the same thing. Do you want a lot of waves or would you rather have less waves in your uh, water effect? Would you want the complexity to be really stormy or would you want it like soft and has more of a soft feel to the water so it won't be so choppy? That's what complexity does. And brilliance is actually what your subject is, I put in a flower, whatever you're putting in, the brilliance is how much it's reflecting from that. So if you want a lot of reflection from your subject, you push that up way up. If you want less reflection, then you bring it down. What happens is you'll see it get dark, but that's because the color, we'll talk about blur in a little bit, but that's because the color that I have here is what I've programmed or it's actually part of the program. It gives it more of like a shadow effect because it's assuming that you're not getting the reflection from here from the sun and so the black is what it's default. But you can change that. We'll do something crazy right now and just do a magenta. It will not be that. We will not keep it that way. But I'm just giving you an idea of what you can do. You can change these colors. And I have done that. I've actually changed these colors up by um, not using these. To tell you the truth, I've used the color picker. And then I've picked, say, a color in my subject and then have changed it in the water. So you can do that and have some fun with that. The blur is basically, do I want more blur or less blur into the water? It's gonna feel soft. So all these little changes make huge differences in what you want to create. Glitter is the last part of this area and that's basically saying where it says right there, sun position. So that's where my sun is. So you just grab onto it and you can turn it around wherever you want it to go. So if, say if you have a sunset that's coming straight down and you, you want the water to, to reflect kind of like a sunset and you put it straight up is, is a, a great tool. But as you can see, it's all blown out. So what you do is you take this little guy and you bring it in so you don't have so much of the effect and it will reduce that sun effect to the water. So these are really cool tools to play with and really manipulate your water to have some fun. I just put it into simple and look what a difference that is just from the simple. So we will go into the ripple now and talk about ripple next. And I will put this back on black and we'll see you in the ripple section. Before we start with the ripple, I forgot to mention that in the water section here, 
in the glitter area. You can also change, remember I was telling you, you can change the sun position, but you can change the color of the sun if you want it, say, a yellow, or you can do a color picker again and change that if you like. You can also use these up here at the top if you like to really get into detail. So say if you do want a sunset and you want it more of, an, of a soft, say, reddish orange, you can go ahead and change this sun color that's reflecting onto the water. So I wanted to mention that. I forgot to mention it in the last segment, but that is an awesome way to really change things up in your photograph. Now let's get to the ripple. Click off of that. I'll just leave that color in for now. So the ripple, in order to really use the ripple the way it's meant to be, you need to soften things up. So I have changed the view and the water to soften the water effect to make it feel more like it's glass. There's not that much wind going on and you will learn how to do it easily also the more you play with it. You really need to do this to be able to see your ripple. This is the place where you're going to change up your ripple. In order to make a ripple, what you'll do, it says right here, click the water to place a ripple. So say if I want a water ripple right here, I will click onto it and it will take the information over here that's to the left and it will make a ripple. If you don't want that ripple in there any longer or you're not liking it, you just click above this green horizon dots and it will get rid of the ripple. Just like it says over here to the left, this is the size of your ripple, you increase it. The, uh, it kind of gets a little swirly, it's a little too, it depends on your subject that will really change up what the ripple looks like. So you will have to change this in order to get it the way you would like it to look. The height, increase it or decrease the height. So if you want a soft ripple or a little bit more higher, like something dropped into, into there that was really big, a rock or so. The undulation is basically how many rings do you want around the ripple. See, there's a lot now going on here, which I would have to play with, but that just gives you an idea, or do you want it a softer ripple? So that's what these little tools do to help you make fun ripples in your water. Again, to get rid of it, you just click on the top and you don't have to worry about a ripple. Those are the main things that are part of this fun plug-in Flood 2 from Flaming Pear. All these down here, when you receive your floods, you will get a PDF that really gives you detailed information on what these do for you. And then once you like what you've got down here, you go ahead and push OK and it sends it right back into Photoshop. If you know how to make masks and layers and all kinds of stuff like that, you can even be more creative. All right, if you have any questions on the flood plugin, please put them down below. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you the this image and down below I'll share a link of, of my other flood images just to give you some inspiration to get out there and photograph and try new things with your camera and in post-processing. I'm Jana Sullivan at Sullivan J Photography and I will see you next week with something special every week. Who knows what it'll be? <laughs> you know it'll be about photography though, right? Cheers!